Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gurleen Kaur, and I'm from Guru Nanak Dev University, Amritsar. I'm here representing my team, Online Physics Laboratory, which is an Ek Siksha initiative. This presentation is powered by Summer Internship Program 2013 at Institute of Technology, Bombay. So, before proceeding further, I would like to thank our guides and mentors who guided at each and every step of this learning experience in eight weeks. Our guides are Professor D.B. Fatak, Mr. Avinash Avate, Mr. Rajnika Njangir, and Mr. Mayank Paliwal. Next, I would like you to introduce you to my team, which comprises of nine members. Harsh Agarwal, Lava Raja, P.B. Krishna Chitanya, Rajat Dube, Satya Prakash, Sneha, Sumati, Vishal Pandey, and myself, Gurleen. So, as we all know, Ek Siksha is an initiative by IIT Bombay, which emphasizes on the concept of e-learning. So, let us first know what are the advantages of e-learning. E-learning provides us with the standardization. All the content available to us is uniform throughout the country. Ek Siksha provides us an initiative with one country and one education system. Next, we have is easy learning content which can be updated rap rapidly. So, the content here is easy to make as well as update because as soon as we make the content, it can be updated online and can be modified in the similar way. Next is interactivity. The modules and the simulations we are preparing are not just the ones where the user has to see. In these kind of simulations, a user gets involved. We provide with the interactive simulations where a user can see multimedia text, images, and videos. Next, we have is we can access this content anywhere and at any time. As internet is available at the back and call of everyone at 24-7, so are these e-courses. Next, this technique is cost effective. This is cost effective because we have to prepare the content only once and, and can be reused and reloaded thereafter. So, in making these simulations, we have used PI framework. So, what is PI framework? PI stands for Physics Interactive Experiment and Framework. This framework is free to use and it is developed by students of IIT Bombay. Graphic operations are supported by easy to use PI objects. As it is easy to use, therefore development becomes faster. User can create objects by drawing circles, arcs, blocks, polygons. User can transform real world coordinates to pixels and maintain a aspect ratio. User can create visually appealing simulations by using a variety of images. So, let's, let's get on to the objectives of our project. Our first objective was completion of physics interactive simulations. We had a target of completing 230 simulations in a span of eight, eight weeks, which we, have to, which we were the course of the internship program. 90 simulations were already done by the software contribution quota people and rest 140 simulations were made by us. Our next objective is extension of PI framework. In extension of PI framework, we had three objectives further. Our first objective was extending the framework for 3D simulations. We extended PI from 2D to 2.5D and then we enabled a camera where we can change the position of the camera so that the user can see the object in 3D. Next was independent motion of objects in the experimental space. We made an animate function where the user can change color, size, location, and opacity of the object in a hassle-free manner all at the same time. Next we have is enhancement of text in the framework. By enhancing the text, we mean we made the text draggable and droppable and we added certain functionalities of the format in the text. So next, we go to our first objective, which was completion of the C simulations. As I already told you, we were given a target of completing 230 simulations 
and we made 140 simulations here. 90 were already available. We use them by making Pi interactive software. This software, we increase the efficiency to 50% so we can concentrate only the code, on the coding part of the thing. Therefore, we were able to complete 140 activities in such a short span of time. Now, let me introduce to the simulations for the first demo. Here we have, first is from mechanics part, where we are going to show how uniform motion is created. The specifications for this activity are, show a car along a straight track moving with uniform velocity, show a distance versus time graph, allow the user to change the input and check the speed of the car. So here we have shown the graph, we are changing the values, the initial distance is 10, the speed is 10 and the time lapse is 2 seconds. So the graph is already plotted and the graph line is started from 10, 0 which is the initial position of the car. Now, when we start the car, the simulation runs. The car covered a distance of 20 meter, which is speed into time, 10 into 2. So the user can change the values at the text uh, check boxes, which are already available there. Now let's move on to the next activity, which is from electricity. This activity will show us the electricity experiments. This activity is from the sixth class textbook. The specifications are, Show various home appliances which are switched on by electric switch and the appliances should function when the switch is turned off and it should be off when the switch is turned off. So here we are showing the next activity. We have a bulb. When we on the switch, the circuit is complete and the bulb starts glowing. Same is the case with fan. When we on the switch, the fan starts moving. Our next activity is from light. In this activity, we are going to show refraction of convex lens. Here, the specifications are show a convex lens, show principal axis and the center. For each ray, draw a refracted ray and refracted rays meet at a point. Allow student to change the thickness of the lens. In this activity, rays are coming from infinity and they converge at the foci of the convex lens. So, when we move the slider, the radius of curvature of the con convex lens changes and say the foci also shifts forward. Now I like to call my friend Vishal Pandey to continue with the presentation. Hello everyone, I'm Vishal Pandey, student of NIT Filcher. I worked on the module extension of pi to pi 3D. Pi, as the name stands for physics interactive experiment, we use pi to create interactive uh, physics experiment simulations that we see we learn around us in our day-to-day -day life. Pi framework has only two axes, X and Y. So only 2D objects and experiment simulations can be represented using this. But as we know, we all are surrounded by real 3D objects. So for better understanding and better visualization, we need some 3D look. Here comes the need of Pi 3D. Pi 3D framework has three axes, X, Y, Z. Positive X axis points toward the right of the screen, positive Y axis point downward the screen. So by the right hand thumb rule, negative z-axis will point outward the screen. Experiment simulation by using pi frame, uh, 3D framework uh, give real look, uh, have better visualization and are easy to understand. For development of pi 3D, we followed a step-by-step -step approach. First, we assigned z positions to the uh, 3D object. Now, our point in 3D, uh, pi 3D framework has three coordinates, x, y, and z. But our screen only knows two coordinate x and y. So how we are representing our 3D point in that? We are actually using mathematics projection for projecting this point on the 2D plane that is our screen. Next thing, how an object behaves when its z value is changed? We know objects should look bigger when it comes closer. So this is done by a scale ratio formula that gives a uh, fake illusion of object movement in 3D space. And object that is near us should hide the object at behind. These three approaches can be seen by the following demonstration. Here you can see there are three objects, or uh, three men. X, Y position of them are fixed, only they are changing, uh, changing Z position. When man comes closer, it looks bigger and it also hides the man present behind it. Next, we allowed uh, user to create his own 3D objects. Now, he, uh, he can use Pi 3D framework to create his own 3D object using the same specification as he uses 
uh, as he creates 2D object using Pi framework. This can be seen by the following demonstration. Uh, it is a 3D object cube, but actually it's a two-dimensional figure. All its eight vertices are projected on the screen. Every time its vertices are changed, it are projected on the screen, so we get a rotating cube. Next, we have, we have uh, provided users the facility to change camera viewpoint. Now, what is camera viewpoint? Currently, we feel like we are standing at some negative jet value, and we are looking perpendicular to the screen. We can change this camera viewpoint. Uh, we can see in the following demonstration, there are some rectangles. They are fixed in XYZ position, only our camera viewpoint changes. It changes in a circular trajectory from front to back. Uh, camera was in initially in front. Now it is ch uh, changing in circular trajectory coming to back. So it follows a 180 degree rotation. But our main motive is, is still the same as pi. That is to use for educational purpose. As you can see in the following demonstration, here is a mirror, a tetrahedral object, and its image formed in the back of the screen. We are changing camera viewpoint for better visualization. As you can see, green cube of the object is in the front of green cube of the image, and yellow cube of the object is in the front of yellow cube of the image. So the concept of lateral inversion, or the concept of chirality, can be explained with this simulation. So many such simulations are, can be performed using pi 3 d framework. Now, my friend Lava uh, will proceed the presentation. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lava and I'm going to present here the, uh, another extension of pi, which is uh, independent object motion of objects. Uh, here you can see that uh, existing version of pi supports only moment change, but sometimes we need to change uh, time constant also. And as pi supports only one moment change with less complexity, if you want to increase the number of changes, the complexity will be more. So we want to make user from free from all these complexities. So that's why we have extended the pi for independent object motion. The next slide we're going to show the our approach towards the independent object motion. Here you can see that how we have approached for this. And our, uh, we have defined a change specification class. This class will provide the following facilities to the user. It consists of follow path and size change and color change. Now I'm going to explain one by one with the following demo. And first, here you can see that a simple example, uh, division by distribution. Here you can see that uh, in, in this module, you, user only define the start point and end point and start time and end time. The rest of the things will be calculated by our class and software will does automatically. Here you can see that uh, this is a uh, aquarium. Uh, the fishes are moving and uh, the fishes are generating the air bubbles. You can see that the size of the bubble is gradually increasing. Uh, user only define here the initial size of the bubble and final size and initial start point and final start point. The rest of the things will be done by our class. And now uh, th this is an another extension of pi uh, which is defined in uh, independent object motion. This is color change. Here you can see that uh, we have uh, taken simple uh, demo for this, which is chameleon. Here you can see that initially it was in one color and it changes color according to the, its surroundings. And that's why, uh, what user does is user only specify the initial color and final color, he will specify the change gradient color also. And he will uh, specify start time and time. The remaining things will be done by our class. And now I would like to invite my friend Chaitanya to speak further. Uh, good afternoon, one and all. I'm Chaitanya. Uh, I'm here to present you the theme regarding the context of PyText. But before going right into the presentation, let me initially explain you what actually a text is. A text is a scripture that we define, which actually helps the user understand something orally, that what we mean. As Pi is a framework, uh, we need to define some text, right? Uh, we, we define this text by uh, using an object called Pi label. It was initially defined uh, the previous time. So the problem is that uh, Pi has very little development in text. So we have enhanced this uh, Pi label by adding many other features upon which you can perform any manipulation, to be precise, many manipulations. So now we have enhanced its uh, features by introducing, uh, as I said, uh, we have uh, chopped the parts into three different divisions. So I'm going to explain you three different divisions. They are, uh, first one comes drag and drop, followed by rotation, and finally the change of text. So first coming to a concept of drag and drop. So drag and drop is a concept which was uh, initially applied over to pi objects. So now this time we have extended and inherited uh, that property over to the pi text. So it is used for improving the interactiveness where uh, we do it by using a mouse click event. 
the thing that it happens is that uh, we give the user freedom to drag and drop the text on the display screen wherever he wants it to be displayed. So uh, now going to the second thing that is uh, rotation. So rotation is also used to improve the interactiveness, but the thing is that here we rotate the text along x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. Now, uh, finally, coming to change font. So change font in the sense that it is a compilation of all the features that we have defined over text, regardless of drag and drop and rotation. It includes many features like changing background color, foreground color. Uh, we can change the text dynamically on the display screen itself. Uh, we can set underline. We can set font color, I mean font size, font style. And we can also set the indent. It means that we can. Uh, set the value between the left margin and the first letter of the text. We can also set the block indent, like uh, the paragraph, the l margin between the, the space between left margin and the paragraph. You can set leading, the spacing between two things, and many other things. And also, we can perform string manipulations. So this ends this. And now uh, I would like to give, I would like to demonstrate a demo which demonstrates the demonstration of Pytext. So uh, here comes the slide. Uh, the slide is that you can see. On the upper part, uh, these are defined by using PyText, which is a Py label. And down you can see many images. The thing that happens is that mouse click. By clicking on different images, uh, we can get uh, the na their names. Here, the thing happening is you can see they're flying over to reach the destinations, the ball, book, cell, sun, dice, bird. So this ends our uh, PyText thing. And now we will be moving over to the challenges. So these are the challenges that we are going to define, that we faced, and uh, we tried to uh, uh, overcome them. The first one is that to make the student understand to the maximum extent. So this is the our primary motto. We made our activities in such a way that uh, it will be understandable to the student in the perfect manner, so that he need not use, he need not refer external references. So coming to second one, uh, the thing here happening is that we are uh, we are showing two uh, objects in 3D, and if we wanna if we wanna bring the second thing over to the front. It should hide the second thing, right? So this is uh, the challenge that we have faced, and we have overcome that too. And third one is that synchronization and management of large number of simultaneous changes. It is independent object motion, where we need to move large number of objects simultaneously that you have seen in the demo. And the final one, to make text draggable and droppable is difficult. So I've been uh, telling you that this is the new feature, and we have defined that too. So this ends the challenges. Now, uh, moving quickly over to the limitations. So anything that is flawless is lawless, right? So here you can see. So our our project is not an ex is also not an exception to that. We also have some flaws. So the first one is that in Py 3D we cannot go inside an object since it, it is actually a 2D interpretation of 3D objects. The thing here happening is that the 3D objects that you have seen are actually 2D objects which have been projected onto the 2D space. So they are not actually 3D objects. They are uh, assumptions by some formulas. So here we cannot as they are 2D objects itself. We cannot go inside the 3D objects and explore them. Uh, here, the thing happening is that uh, the drag and drop and rotation, both of them can be performed only with mouse click event. So as it cannot decide what to do, uh, whether to do that or that, uh, it is, we think this has a limitation. But we have overcome this by using a handle, which disables one thing when we are using other thing. Like if we are using um, uh, drag and drop, it disables rotation and uh, vice versa. So now moving into the learning. So learning is the most important thing in any uh, anything that we do. We should learn something, right? So here are that we feel that we learn this. We have we have learned to develop software and industrial standards. We believe that all the projects that we are doing here are of industrial standards, and it gives a lot of experience for us when we go to the industries. And going to second one to apply the object orientation principles for making our code reusable. So here uh, you have seen the objects cuboid. They are all defined, and you can. Like you can use them in other projects also, which is a principle of object orientation principles, and that ha that is what we learned. And coming to third one, to work in a team. This is the most important thing that we believe, because uh, working in it, working in the team is the most important thing that we will face when we go in the f uh, in the future when we go to industries. So this has been a very good experience for us. And finally, to develop code in library, which helps us understand how languages are actually created. See, we are. Uh, we, when we use any language, we actually work on that, like using its things, but we cannot work on the library. But we uh, luckily or somehow uh, got a chance to work on the library. We feel that uh, we have done enough job for that. Um, and finally, I would like to uh, uh, summarize that the 3D objects, uh, independent object motion, uh, text, and a lot of activities that we have emphasized on in the uh, online physics laboratory have been done in the best possible way uh, that we can 
to make it more interactive, more stimulated, and more attractive thing. So I would like to thank everyone uh, who has been a part of this and who has been backing up right from the beginning. So uh, that's all from us. And thank you for your kind and patient attention. Ordinarily, I would say lines of code in terms of programming language lines of code. But here, you would have a whole lot of prescriptive lines of code as well. So approximately, do you have any idea? Of course, sir, uh, sir, use it to say. Actually, we have defined at least 500 lines of code for each activity. Sir, in 3D, there are different classes. There is main class Py3D. It has 324 lines. We have worked in a different module. Uh, I have worked in 3D to it. There will be similarities. No, seriously, do this exercise later, just for the record. Okay. Because what we are also interested in finding out is what is the productivity of individual teams in terms of programming. Okay. Then. Second, if I have to run all this material on Akash, what does it take? Actually, it works on a browser. So browser should have flash player, then it will work. But if browser has flash player, then the entire interaction will work exactly as it is. And flash player should uh, run that action script 3.0. It's the new, uh, some new version of flash that runs action script. Sir, in case of online physics laboratory, we haven't, but our other groups have tested on a cache tablet. And it works? Yes, sir. The third one, if I wanted to use these for children who are studying using Indian languages, Marathi, Telugu, Marathi, Gurmukhi, Hindi, what would be the effort involved in your case and whether you have given any directional statements which say that if you want to change the interaction language, then the strings in the following table have to be replaced by something else. Sir, while in code. The code. So is there any string which is hard coded in the code? Sir, while coding the whole program, we have used labels. The labels can be changed and it can be modified using a Google translator. So it can be translated into any, any language. As in the case of Ek Siksha portal, they have provided a translator functionality. So anyone, it, it, this activity is going to be linked in the Ek Siksha portal. It will portal. not always be as simple as that. Because for example, the names that you put in some kind of an order here, like ball, kite, whatever, whatever, that will change from language to language. And that means the animation or simulation order itself might have to be changed if the order is implied. Otherwise, it's okay. These labels are stored where? Are they part of the code or is there a separate table? So if they are part of the code, how will I change it? So we have tried to keep the text to the minimum and uh, we have tried to explain. No, no, that's okay. It's not a question of minimum or more. It's a question of ease with which things can be changed. In fact, if it is minimum, it is harder to find and replace. So we have a separate class for text. Like he has developed text. Separate class for text. Yes, sir. So, I am answering it on their behalf because they don't know. <laughs> because it is in future. Okay. Uh, the philosophy is that all text written, okay, goes through pi label. Okay. They have been told not to use flash text. Okay. Hopefully, everybody has followed that. Okay. Now, what we do, at least in the earlier versions, what we have done, not done for pi. Okay. We modify pi label. Okay. So that in a testing mode, the pi label will make a database entry for all the strings it has received. Okay. So if pi label is given book, ball, and uh, whatever, okay, all those entries will come inside the database. Okay. Now, so so that is the no that is the training. Meaning I have to ex. So already... Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you very much. I hope sooner rather than later we'll see all this work on Akash tablets. Thanks a lot. Once again, let us give them a big hand. Huh?